Hello again everybody and welcome to another OCR A-Level PE screencast and this particular screencast is going to be discussing cognitive learning theory. Now cognitive learning theory is the third learning theory you need to cover within the skill acquisition topic and essentially it is a thinking or thought process that requires concentration as to what the task has been given to you. In the exams we often see it as cognitive learning theory, but you may see some questions that talk about gestaltism or gestalt learning theory. And essentially what you need to understand is that cognitive learning theory is the same thing as gestaltism or gestalt theory. So just be aware of that when you're, you're working towards your exams. Cognitive learning theory differs to social learning theory and operant conditioning in the sense that the starting process is giving the learner a whole problem or a task to solve. So you're giving the whole task or problem straight away to the learner rather than breaking it into bits or rather than advising them to watch somebody else do something. The learner would then think about the problem and try to solve that problem by doing the following things. First of all, the learner might explore in their mind have they had any previous experience in any way, shape or form in relation to the problem. The next thing they must do is think about what is it I need to do with this problem that's been given to me. And we call that the perception of the problem. They're working out what needs to be done. Now the Gestalt theory supposes and the, and the way this was calculated is that, for example, a monkey would have been left in a cage or an area with some hanging fruit, e.g. some bananas, and some crates would have been left around the monkey in that set area. The monkey, over a period of time, it might have taken a long time, but over a period of time, would have learnt that in order to get the bananas that were hanging from the top of the area that they were in, they could stack the crates and get themselves higher in order to reach those bananas. So the whole problem presented to the monkey at that point in time was, here is some food, how are you gonna get it? And the monkey has thought about that, thought about that perception, oh, I'd like to eat the food, how do I get to the food? And made a guesstimate in terms of how to do those things and to solve that problem. And we're using that idea in terms of sport, in terms of learning skills in sport. So how do we do this? And for your exams, you'll need to know this exact step process as to how this is achieved when learning a skill. So as we suggested, the first point you're noting down is that a whole problem is presented. We then, or the learner then, figures out what is required to be done. The learner would then draw on any previous experience they've had before in any way, shape or form, in relation to the problem. They might then have a go at the task. For example, the monkey might then stack a few crates to try and get upwards. At that point, they might not succeed in the task. So that's important to note. And so therefore, the performer must remember what they did in the first attempt and then change something for the second attempt to try and succeed. And that is what is meant by intervening variables. We've remembered what's happened before and therefore we're going to change and adapt and try the task a different way. Finally, when the success arrives in doing or completing the task, we get an insight moment and that's the phrase that's used. The way I would give an example of doing this without technically using a sporting example, but the easiest thing to think about is if you're given a bike for the first time as a young child, so the bike is presented to you. You've never been on a bike before in your life. So that is a whole problem presented. You then look at the perception of the problem. What do I need to do with this bike? Okay, there's two handlebars. I might feel the handlebars and might press the brake. I might move my hands around the pedals or revolve the wheels. I might look, oh, there's a seat and a saddle. What do I do with that? So it's the perception of the problem. Have I got any experience of seeing one of these things before? Well, yes, I've got a brother or a sister who has been riding bikes 
or there's a neighbour down the road I've seen riding bikes or I've been watching some television and someone's ridden a bike on there. So I understand what's going on from memory. I then might have a go on the bike. I might sit on the bike the wrong way. I might fall off the bike quite a few times. I might not pedal at the right time. My balance might be incorrect. And I might change those things as I go to try and get it better. And the insight moment would therefore be when I'm riding on my own, keeping good balance and upright and cycling correctly. And that would be a good example of cognitive learning theory. Not necessarily a sporting example we can use for exams, but it gives you an idea as to how that, that efficiency works in terms of that learning. So in terms of a summary process for cognitive learning theory when you're revising, we give skills delivered as a whole. For example, can you get to the other side of the pool in three different strokes in, in a swimming pool? That would be your task as do as a whole. Can you score um, five points in the next 15 minutes as a basketball team against this high-end ability team? So I'm giving a whole problem, a whole task. The development of insight explains how we learn. It's that moment where you work out, okay, this is what needs to be done. The insight moment, it gets concreted in your memory. Therefore, we learn and remember that process. For example, in the bike, most people, they may not have ridden bikes for years, but they can still remember. Once they get on a bike, they know what to do and we've learned something. At the same time, because it's a whole practice and therefore we're trying things in one go, it gives good offer of kinesthesis and proprioception. So intrinsic feedback mechanisms can be used because we're figuring out what to do. Things like balance are good examples of that. However, when you're working with cognitive learners and you're giving them a whole problem, you might need to guide them as a coach. So therefore, manual guidance might be required. For example, going back to the bike, you might need to add stabilizers, some form of mechanical guidance to get them up and running to start with. Or it might be that a person needs to be held to keep the balance of the bike before they can understand how to ride the bike. Once again, thanks for watching. Um, if you need any more support, or anything you need from A-Level PE for OCR syllabus, please head to our I Speak PE channel on YouTube.